All right, everybody, welcome to our drone class. Uh, hope you're excited. Oh, low energy, low energy. It must be Friday morning or something. Um, okay, so, um, so this is uh, our intro to drones class. Um, way back uh, a long time ago, we first invented this. This was envisioned as a two course cycle. It was a part one and a part two. Um, essentially, uh, we just never had a huge demand for part two because people are re really interested in part one and then we get a few in part two. So we pretty much haven't really taught the part two in a while. Same thing with our restoration ecology class. Um, so we've, we've kind of, I've kind of modified this class in the last year or two to bring in some of those elements of the part two into here, which, which is all good. Having said that, the main thing we're doing this semester is basically teaching you all how to be safe and, uh, and effective users of drones. So at the end, you know, come Christmas time, uh, you will be safe and much better. You may not be the world's expert drone pilot, but you should be able to, um, uh, if you go to a consulting firm and they said, hey, we, we need someone to do some mapping or whatever, you should be able to do that. Hey, if we need to go get some images of this, whatever cliff or something, right, you should be able to do that safely and responsibly. Um, and really the emphasis for us is gonna be on, on the practical skills. Um, uh, we've always struggled for, well, okay, I'll, I'll talk about the history of our class later today and how this evolved, but essentially um, we were the, the pioneer in, uh, or one of the pioneers in the CSU system and in, in actually higher ed in California of teaching you guys how to use this stuff. And so it's evolved tremendously over the years. So I'll give you guys a little taste of that, uh, uh, how we had to change things and things over time. Regardless, um, there is, uh, for the last decade or so, there's um, uh, a, it's not really a barrier, but there's a, um, what's often perceived as a barrier for you all to get into the drone activity space. So it used to be, you just go Amazon, Best Buy, whatever, buy your drone and go do your stuff, right? Um, indeed, when we started this, most of the folks that were helping us, um, you know, teach students and stuff were literally just that. They're a hobbyist that just really got into it. They really became great, you know, uh, very knowledgeable about flying and stuff, but that, that was it. Um, now the main issue, uh, the main hurdle, I should say, is what's called the FAA Part 107, which is also known as the Commercial Drone License. And so um, the way that works is uh, it's, it's like a, it's, a, it's exactly like a pilot's license. And so you can't just go to some rando place and somebody teach you how to do it. You, you can learn from different people, but the actual testing is controlled by the FAA. So that means to get your Part 107 license, we can't, I can't give it to you. Um, you have to go to a federal testing center. They're mostly at airports, um, and you have to take it there, which is great. It just means that you have to pay them, and, and, I, and we can't. We can't do that. So there's recently been some change in legislation where maybe eventually we might be able to do that ourselves internally, but for now we can't. So just know that we have a lab fee with this class. There's a book you guys are going to need to buy. Um, and those are our official school prices. Um, I strongly, st Zoom type, strongly, 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 strongly encourage you guys to get your um, FAA uh, Part 107 license. Um, but that's going to be another 175 bucks that you have to pay. And, you, and it has to be arranged through, um, through one of these testing centers. So we'll talk about that more. But, but um, that's the one thing that we can't, we can't offer just by legal definition. But I really want to encourage you guys to think about that. And I if, if that's even a little teeny bit vaguely kind of sort of maybe theoretically possibly an interest for you, you should 100% absolutely do it. Every single one of our students that have, has done this, even if they're not actively doing drones for their job or whatever, um, it's really a good thing on the resume and it really communicates to their potential employee or their, their new bosses or whatever that they, that they can do stuff. Even for just taking like fun, fun qualitative pictures for reports and stuff, it's really, really, really helpful. Um, once you, so the test used to be 150 bucks. They upped it relatively recently to 175 bucks, but now there's no renewal fee. So every two years you have to renew, but you never have to pay again. So it's 175, like a one-time fee. It's not like every time you renew it, you pay another couple hundred bucks or something like that. Um, and uh, and so, so just to be clear, that's, that's one other component that we can't control, but I really wanna encourage you guys to think about that. It's completely on your own. So there's, there's tests all day long, every day of the week. 
uh, you know, LA, out here, in the valley, all over the place. So it's wherever is convenient for you all. I would really encourage you guys to pick a date like um, mid-semester and just make an appointment and just do it. Um, I've had uh, dozens and dozens and dozens and dozens of students over the years do that. I think we had one that didn't pass the, f the very first time, right? So it, it's, it's, um, it's totally doable. Um, and, uh, and, but a lot of students would be like, yeah, Dr. Ray, I really wanna do that, but I got a lot of classes this semester, so I'm gonna wait till like after Christmas and do it. And I'd say about 80, 90% of the students that say that never end up doing it. So force yourself to do it this semester. You also get a benefit because you get a you get a basically um, get out of doing the final if you if you if you pass your 107, so that's our incentive to really encourage you guys to do this. You don't have to, you don't have to, but but really want to encourage you guys. To. Okay, so more on that later, but just wanted to put that sort of be in the back of your head. Okay, so here's our, our okay. The other the other thing that's funky about our classes, the most important thing we can do is have you have hands on um, the the sticks, have hands on the stuff. And so it'll take us a week or two before we actually really start flying. But um, the goal is as, as many hours as possible, you all just moving things around. And it's just like riding a bike or anything else. We'll show you the initial basic stuff, and then there's nothing magic to it. Then it's just you all doing it over time, repetitive motion. And okay, so this, remember this stick does this, this one does that. If I push this, it makes it go that way and that way. And, and to do that component of stuff. And just do it again and do it again. I don't want you to crash. And then I mean, don't crash, and then you go, uh, and then we'll do it again, and then you'll get better and better and better, right? So it's all good. Um, that's the most important thing. The challenge is, though, as we'll talk about, um, these things are battery uh, 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 fueled things. And so the batteries aren't on instant demand. And we have a ton of you guys in this class this semester, which is great, which is great. It just means that. Um, we can't just go fly, come back, put the battery in. It takes the battery, you know, 40 minutes, an hour or so to get fully charged. And if we have several batteries, it takes several. And so um, once, once this class started to get above, like, you know, eight, nine, ten people, it, it, the original plan was, hey, we'll, we'll fly, do a bunch of fly, 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 come back, get some snacks, charge some batteries, go back out, fly for some more, come back, have some lunch, go and, and that doesn't really work just because of the, the timing of, of, of how long it takes these batteries to charge. So, um, so we've, we've evolved the class a little bit um, in the last uh, few years. And so now, as you guys probably have seen from your schedule, there's a, the lecture part of it, and there's the this part, the, the, our, our in-face together on Fridays uh, part of it, right? So the, we've pretty much pushed all of the, the um, sort of FAA kind of legal training, that kind of stuff, to the virtual side. And so there's going to be um, modules uh, start, it's turned on this week, um, and they're going to be in two-week chunks. So it's not like something due every single, well, there's some, a scoop it due every week, but, but there's the main content, it's like in two-week pairs. So there's you know, three, three, four chapters in a chunk. So you guys will do that, and, and there's some you know, quizzes and some online stuff, but really it's about you guys reading through the stuff and going through some of the problems in the back of the chapter and just getting familiar with this, with, with you know, like a good chunk of this stuff is just complete common sense and very obvious. Um, the biggest part, I'll, I'll, yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll tell you when I get to that. Uh, the, the biggest uh, challenge is the, um, and I want to be careful here because I want you all to follow the law. You should always follow the law. You should always be good and everything. But the, the rules that the FAA has imposed are, there's a technical word for it, it's dumbass. Um, they want you to behave like a pilot. Now it makes, I understand where it comes from, it makes logical sense in, in, in some levels, but much of it is completely overkill with the technology now. So we all have these apps that we can check instantly depending on where we are to see if we're in control there, in, if we're in places we should be flying or not be flying, right? And that's great. Um, to have you all read aeronautical charts that, that airplane pilots use, um, I think that's a barrier. I think that's designed to keep certain people away. And I think that's designed to sort of say people that have gone through our training and, and sort of look like us and come from our backgrounds, they, 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 could, they should do this stuff. But other people, you know, we don't know. So it just creates another barrier. 
Um, having said that, that's the biggest challenge on the 107, is reading the different airspace, reading these, these maps that look like oftentimes a foreign language, a lot, a lot of weird colors and weird symbols and hatching and sometimes a number that has a full, you know, all the digits and sometimes only the first couple digits of the number and it's just, it's just a foreign language. And so that's really what the online stuff is about. You guys do the reading and then, you know, go through the material and practice and all that kind of stuff. To help you with that, um, and this is, on our, this is on our welcome page, I've made a, a uh, study bot for you guys uh, this year. And so this is uh, uh, using um, a lot of different tests in AI. And so this is a practice thing. So you click this at any time from any browser and you can just go through stuff and, and, and practice stuff. So it'll, it'll ask you um, uh, uh, test questions, right? Again, some super easy right now. Some of them you get right, even though we haven't, I haven't started talking ever. Others, yeah, a little bit of time, you'll, you'll get it pretty easy. And then there's some like like those more specific aeronautical rules of the road, like is it 400 feet, is it 500 feet? It's 400 feet. Uh, you know, you, you would need to know a little bit more specific stuff. So that my hope is that this is the first time we're trying this. So I'd love for you guys to even play with it um, this week, even though you're just starting out, and just see, right? And, and since, you know, we, I, I control this, um, if there's something that isn't working, tell me and I'll, I'll adapt it. And I want, I want this to be a useful study tool for you guys. Um, uh, online here whatever so that's so that's that um, other uh, logistics for we, we pause for a second and do our safety training um, is if you guys haven't watched our safety or welcome video watch, watch our welcome video I, I blasted out to most folks but if people added late maybe you didn't see it but that's okay you can watch it here um, now that uh, everything's activated and then this is how you guys catch me this is how you guys um, if you want to have a meeting with me um, any of that kind of stuff so if you click this this will take you to our Calendly, so to my Calendly link, which is how you can make appointments with me. So I have office hours after my uh, class on Tuesday, physically, in person, up at Tortillas, uh, midday. Um, and then I have office hours after this class. Um, I've, I've learned a little teeny bit, as a, a little, little teeny bit as I've gotten older. So instead of having the office hours start right the minute this class stops, I, we have about a half hour break so I can hit the bathroom or whatever. Um, and that, and today's option is a, is a Zoom-based one, but I'll be here, right, for most time. So, so while the default is Zoom-based for my other students, other classes, they don't have to come to class on a Friday, to campus on a Friday, um, you know, I'm more than happy to meet with you. You know, we can just talk, you know, physically face-to-face. -face. Um, and so uh, while you do not have to make an appointment to come to my office hours, I really encourage it. That way, just we sort of protect your space. You can always try coming, um, you know, tortillas or, or catch me, but I, I can't, if you didn't make an appointment, I can't guarantee, I mean, it's probably gonna be fine, but when we get near midterms or something like that, you know, things tend to, um, everybody gets on top of each other. Um, okay, that. Um, uh, maybe we'll talk just real briefly, one more thing, and then I'll turn it over to Zach, which is, um, so our syllabus right here, so all this, all this stuff is there, oops, all this stuff is there, so you guys should look at this uh, later today. Um, but I just want to talk about, um, okay, so it's so of course breakdown stuff. So, so this is, um, so a whole lot of this class is showing up and just doing stuff, right? This is a skills-based class, right? So this is a you here doing stuff class. Um, yes, we have the components that, that's by arrangement online and you guys should be doing that and making progress and all this and that. Um, but really, this is weighted to you all showing up you all getting, getting stick time, getting practice time, you know, hopefully not crashing the drone, but when you crash the drone, make sure you know how to check it. We're gonna be very safe. We're gonna, you all need to know how to get the fire extinguisher. You all need to know how to wear a vest, you know, all those steps, every step. So this is not just about the theory of flying a drone. This is about practical use in a potentially sensitive environment or uh, an environment that, um, uh, for whatever reason, we need to really comport ourselves in a specific way and make sure we're not hurting people or our environment, not being a nuisance to people. You know, we don't want to do any of that kind of stuff. And so, so really, when we look here, so showing up every week, 10% degree grade. Woohoo! Done! Nailed it. All right, cool. Uh, next is uh, effective progress. What the hell does that mean? I don't know. It just means you're making progress, right? It means you're showing up every week and you're trying and you're trying. That's what it means, right? So there's no test with that. Just wanted to see that you guys are really intentionally showing up. Um, most people, not a problem. Some people will sort of start and they'll get like distracted by something and they'll st start not coming and whatever. That's, it's meant to encourage people to really be engaged. 
Um, the other thing I want to mention, and we'll get to this when Zach talks, does a safety talk, but also this effective progress means when we're in here, we're in here, right? So we're not talking to our cell phones, we're not, we're not working on some other class stuff. So because this is a real physical skills thing and there is a, a, a physical safety element, I and mean, it's not super dangerous, but, but there is nevertheless a element of um, our safety, other people's safety, critters' safety, you're all in, right? So we'll, we'll use our phones at, you know, at times to, to help with the controls or, or, or view the stuff coming from these things, but we're not, we're not you know, video gaming or, or Snapchatting or anything like that, right? So, so all that goes into are you making a focused progress? So even if you're not flying, you should, we'll go over this, but you, know, you wanna be engaged and you're gonna be a, a safety spotter. You're gonna be looking around making sure everything looks good. And so those folks might be focused over there. Maybe I'm gonna be double checking and make sure there's nobody distracting the folks you know, over here or, or something of that nature. Okay, um, and then we will have periodic practical skills. Um, and so again, it's not a stress at all, but it's, we'll do some things and we'll, I'll just say, okay, Max, here, uh, here give you a you know, put away machine and say, here you go, set it all up. And I'll just sit there and watch you, make sure you can you know, put all the parts on. And, and that's, that's not, it's not a stressful test, it's just I wanna make sure you guys can all do that, right? And if you, if you F up, you don't know how to do it, that's cool, let's show you, right? We'll show you, and then you go do it. So it's all about you guys demonstrating that you can do this um, no problemo. Um, and so that stuff is, so you know, 50% is pretty much not, slam done. You guys show up, put the time in, it's gonna be great, you're gonna, you're gonna do well. Um, and then another thing that we'll um, uh, work on here, not in the first several weeks, but once sort of like uh, a third halfway through, once we kind of get some of the basic skills on, there's sort of two main flavors of using our drones. So one is to do a qualitative thing or to do some sort of perspective pictures, right? And so a lot of times when I need to do um, educational stuff, I'll, I'll grab Zach and he'll fly it and I'll talk and he'll, and he'll fly. And, he, and I'm saying like, go right, go left, right? And he's, we're kind of doing that kind of stuff. So that's an important skill. That, that, that's our foundational skill that we'll talk about. How do we do that? But then in a practical sense, how we like 90% of the stuff that we use these drones for in ESRM is for mapping, is for creating some remote detection of bird nests or oil spills or vegetation or something like that. And the vast majority of that time, we are not actively, you know, drive over here, push the button, take a picture, drive over here. We're, we're giving some instructions, an area to map, and we're having um, essentially the autopilot figure out the optimal flight plan, and then you essentially go boop, and it and it goes and does it itself. When the battery gets low, it, it pauses wherever it is, comes back, lands, we swap a battery, it goes back to the exact spot where it last was, and then continues going. And so, so those, are two, those are two separate skills, right? You ab everybody absolutely has to be able to pilot themselves because if at any time something, a bird flies in or there's some weird wind conditions or something, you need to always be able to, um, as the so-called pilot in charge, you always need to be able to grab the device and bring it back to safety. So, you, so that's our starting point. But in practice, mostly what we do, that's not what we do, right? We use these autopilots. So we'll, we'll also pivot and you guys will work on making some um, initial maps and stuff like that. So you guys will be exposed to that stuff as well. Which again, historically is what we did in our part two of this course. Um, uh, we're gonna be doing a brief opinion poll because we haven't done it for several years. Um, and that's really helpful to, um, for us to have our converts, for you all to have a sense of what the community thinks. So we've been doing this for about 12 years now or so, um, particularly with regards to acceptance. And it's been really interesting how things have evolved over the years. Um, so a, a brief opinion poll. And then um, the stuff that's uh, primarily online, right? Which is the, we some quizzes and things like that. Um, and then weekly Scoop It posts. So everybody should have gotten Scoop It. Well, when we take a break here, I'll show you guys how to do that. But essentially all, you, all we're doing is every week, even though the modules are every two weeks, every week, I want you guys to be perusing the news and just looking for interesting drone related things. Could be about the war, could be about some Amazon delivery thing, could be about medical supply, you know, whatever. Um, and then uh, you're gonna grab one of those stories. And if you guys have had me for some other classes, you're familiar with this, we're gonna, you're gonna grab one of those stories and essentially throw it into this curation site where it'll be there. And then, uh, and then by the end of the week, I want you to have commented on at least one other person's uh, uh, news story, right? 
And so this is my effort to try to get you guys to pay attention to the news, pay attention to what's going on, not so much in the textbook or here, but, but the wider society, how we're talking about this kind of stuff. And, um, and so for that, for that, when midweek is the, is the um, uh, you need to post your, your, sto your, your original found news story on uh, Wednesday of that given week. And then you need to post your reflection by Friday of that week, right? So that, so that there's a little bit of time that you can see every so. I encourage you guys to look at that a lot. And the only requirement there, it has something to do with drones. The only requirement here is that it can't be something somebody already posted. So if, if it's about the war in Ukraine and uses of drones there, and, and um, you know, Emily and Max post about it, that's fine. But they can't post the same story, the same story from the same, say, Wall Street Journal article. Right, that, that's my only rule. Cool? So we'll go over that. So what I'd like to do when we take a break today or we need to pause, I want you guys to post your stories this week and then post a reaction. And one, that'll just take care of your week one assignment, but also it'll help me know if you guys are having any hiccups and I can help you get that done today. So that, that stuff we'll just do in class for today. Okay. Um, so that, and, and it, we do we have a final. So we do have a final. So if you look on our uh, schedule of classes, we do have a final. Again, if you take and pass the 107, you don't have to take the final. So if you want to have a free whatever week that is in December, that's another way I'm trying to encourage you guys to consider signing up for the 107 and, and just getting it. Um, so cool. Good? All right, any general intro? I know there's more stuff in the syllabus, but any general big picture questions? Okay. Then I think what I'll do is I'll pause right now, and I'm going to ask... Uh,